So in this video, I'm going to give you what, in my 30 years, is the most reasonable explanation or way to get the gist of Gödel's incompleteness theorem. So people have heard of Kirk Gödel. Uh, they know he's important because uh, this is the person Einstein wanted to hang out with during his days at Princeton. Uh, they may have heard Gödel's incompleteness theorem and its relation to consciousness. Um, you see over here, I've got Gödel Escher Bach, uh, which is one of the um, uh, classic uh, books that um, pointed out not just the importance of Gödel's incompleteness theorem, but how it has come about in different ways, and these self-referencing things like Bach's fugues or uh, M.C. Escher, the, uh, the visual artist, how he had self-referencing in his visual art. Okay, so there's a couple ways that I've talked about Gödel's incompleteness theorem. And um, uh, by far the best has, has come from Rudy Rucker. So Rudy Rucker is a mathematician who wrote Infinity and the Mind. And when I came across his way of explaining it, it instantly became the way I talked about it in lecture. And not only did I talk about it in lecture, but I actually used his method to, um, uh, as part of a scientific research project that ended up getting published. And I'll talk about that uh, right after I discuss the theorem. So again, if you get Gödel's incompleteness theorem, if you get the original theorem, it's not going to make any sense to you. In fact, you pretty much have to have a PhD in logic just to even begin to understand some of the symbolic um, reasoning in it and, and these things called proofs. But the reason it's so important is because even though most of us will never really get it in its entirety, you can get a, a version of it, and that's what I'm going to give you in this video, a version of Gödel's incompleteness theorem that us ordinary people can get. And, and when we get it, we get the importance of it. And I'll talk about that too when I'm done. So let's get into it. Okay, so this is, again, based on Rudy Rucker from Infinity and the Mind, and he says, let's imagine there's a universal truth machine. This is the most sophisticated advanced computer imaginable. And let's just call it UTM for universal truth machine. It can state any truth in the universe and that's because it's so ultimately intelligent and advanced and so here we've got utm the universal truth machine now kirk goodall is very clever so what he wants to do is he's going to back this machine into a corner and i'll show you how he does this uh he writes out a sentence utm will never say g is true but here's the self-referencing part so just go slow with this he actually creates a reference to the statement. So the statement itself is, UTM will never say G is true. Then he calls that statement G. So here in all my technical sophistication, I'll let you kind of ponder that for a little bit. So G is the statement, UTM will never say G is true. Now he writes this out just like I did to you. And then he shows UTM the statement and asks, the, and asks UTM, is G true or not? Now here's the cool part, if it hasn't hit you yet. So again, by staring at this, imagine giving this to UTM. You backed UTM into the most metaphysical cosmic corner possible. If UTM says G is true, it makes it false. So UTM, this machine that's supposed to be capable of say, stating any truth possible, cannot say what is actually true, and in doing so, makes it actually true. Okay? And you may have to pause and go back a little bit and, and do that a few times. What I found in research, and I gave this to a couple hundred students, what I found is that for some of them, it absolutely clicked very quickly, and they found the paradox in it. And these were mixed handers, people who have larger connection between the two sides of the brain. For other people, it was really difficult for them to make, for them to feel it. And honestly, when I explain it in class, I don't get the same sensation because it's very difficult to focus your attention on explaining it and getting it at the same time. But the wonderful part about all this is what it implies as far as consciousness and mind is concerned, and particularly at least in my view, the thinking mind. What he is able to show, what was he, what he was able to show is that the very best, most intense form of thinking 
results in a really clever paradox where if you put thinking to the test, it will ultimately come up with absolute proof that the thinking mind is limited and that there are truths, things that are true, that are way beyond the capacity of the thinking mind. So uh, I hope that was helpful. There's so many versions of Gir Girdle's Incompleteness Theorem out there. I think this is about as easy as it gets for the thinking mind because what it's ultimately pointing to is something beyond it.